Hello everybody, I'm Daniel Montiglio from Foreign RBG and we are again one more time in the Valna Culinary Arts Institute for our last episode of this season, Bison History with Chef Hugo. How are you Chef? Chef, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. Excellent. Guys, welcome to our last episode of the season for Bison History. We are inside the Valna University of Management. Yes. Thank you Vroom to receive us. And today we're doing? We are doing a traditional Balkanic dish. Which is? Moussaka. Moussaka. It's not Greek. It's Bulgarian. We'll do the Bulgarian version. It's not the traditional one that you have in uh, Greece. There's no eggplant in this one. one All right. Here. It's quite different. Moussaka is typical from the Balkan. And in, it, in us, we have potatoes, we have some mushrooms, we have some ground beef. Of course, we have Bulgarian yogurt to finish on top. And the herbs. We also have some uh, smoked pepper over here. Cumin. We have some salt. And we also have here the chubritsa, which is the Bulgarian oregano. Yeah, it's savory. It's a, a flavor of savory. If you don't have chubritsa, you can use oregano. Right. How so, is that to grow? You're gonna do the. You're gonna start with the mushrooms. I'll explain something. The mushrooms they grow in the dirt. Yes, this is covered in dirt, so we have to wash them. You can either use a brush to brush them. Okay. You could also, if you want, just peel them. You could go like this. Come here. You can also go like this and then peel them or you remove. But, but that will take forever. Yeah, and that's also a typical French way of doing things. Okay, uh, we're gonna chop them. Okay. We're gonna chop them. We've washed them in a bowl with just a pinch of flour and some water. Just toss them in uh -huh. and then take them out. And then they come out like this. And we did this because I use them right away. All right. So this is a sponge. And if you don't do it properly, it's gonna soak up all that water and it's gonna lose it. You're gonna chop the mushrooms. You start by... I will chop it like this. You start by doing a base. Look, you remove the foot first. Ah, okay. I'll give you a tip. As a pro tip of the day, I'll do brinoise of mushrooms. So you remove the, the, the foot like this. Yes. Them, okay. And then you cut a base like this. So it's flat. Okay. We do the brinoise after, which are the... What we do? Brunoise. Brunoise. And the what small, brunoise mean? Small dices. Yeah? In? French. French language. Yeah. Okay. I like this. I've learned so much French words with you. Well, cooking is the best. No matter what people say, the French are the best technique when it comes to cooking. Yes. They haven't really invented cooking, whatever, whatever. The best technique still remains French. Okay, so All one. right. So the potatoes, Daniel has peeled them. Yes. Okay. Uh, I like them with the skin on, it gives you more vitamins, so they're diced in cubes already. And they're smaller cubes, small cubes, they will cook faster than if you have a big chunk. Why do you leave the potatoes in water, Hugo? Why they they don't oxidize, they don't get dark. And it's just to don't get dark? Or if it or gets something... dark, then the potatoes will be dark afterwards, and you have a dark product when you finish. Uh -huh. The potato won't be white as it should be, or ivory as it should be. But it's going to be dark and it becomes a bit bitter also. Becomes a little bit bitter. Yeah. All right. So potato is just round. So to avoid this, you cut the base. Uh huh. Okay. Musaka is, in, is made it in, is cooked into the oven, no? Yes, it's baked in the oven. So what we do is we do the vegetables. Then we just it's simple. Uh, typical of many countries. Turkey has it. Uh, all the Middle Eastern countries have one version of it, one way or another. Always with potatoes. Uh, most of them are using eggplants because it's in their it's in their culture to use eggplants mm -hmm. in the Middle East. The, the uh -huh. lower part of uh, Middle East, south of Bulgaria, uh -huh. will, will use uh, eggplants. Bulgaria use potatoes because they have many good potatoes. Today we are with our friend. It's not no, nobody new. It's our friend Benji, Benji El Salvaje from Hashtag Tourism. He came How to help us a few weeks ago when we did the market. He's the cameraman at the market. Yes. He did a great job. And ever since uh, this growth into uh, a good business relationship, wow! We're creating a class with Benjamin actually for September at the university over here for digital marketing for chefs. Really? Yeah, something that's going to be one of the only ones in Europe doing this. Nice. And that is going to be part of the curriculum, or is part it of the an extra part of the curriculum. digital marketing for chefs? For chefs. For chefs. Uh -huh. Then if I have a restaurant, I can come and. and and take that uh, course uh, yeah, to promote my own or, yourself. or if, you, Amazing. Person, if you're a gourmet and you like to cook a lot and you have to clean your home and you do dishes you want to promote yourself you can do this also 
So here's a little spoiler. I'm already writing the script for the course. Yeah. yeah We've been right. on this for a few months already to make it happen. Nice. Because Perfect. we also have a digital, digital food photography for chef classes happening. We're going to have guest photographers from the outside come in to give also online classes, on-site person-to-person -person classes. The city of Varna has a program with us where we're going to create an exposition in town. So all of this joined together, create digital uh, marketing for chefs. Make a lot of sense. You cannot run a business without to have a, at least a, a basic knowledge of digital marketing in these days. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. You need to have this knowledge. You need to have this. It's, it's a must. It's a must for any kind of... And I, I recommend Barna University of Management for, We're this. Great for this. And I recommend Benji because he's experienced and I've been doing this and helping many companies and tourist hotels in Bulgaria for the last years. I appreciate yeah, it. You're going to do the right. meat action. So teach me something. You've done something before with me. Yeah, I learned from you that First, before we start to fry something on, on the pan, or we have to heat. We have to heat it. Later, we put the oil. Yeah. Can I put it? It's already. Wait, wait. You check first. Check with your hand. I'm not you can feel the heat like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's good. So it's good. Okay. So now you put the oil, and then what do you do afterwards? I wait the Two oil seconds. until it, it heats, and then, just then. I will put my meat, that is the first ingredient that we're going to put here. Yes. Now good. it's time to put okay. it. All okay. right. And uh, you're going to use a whisk. You do this. You're laughing, I need to do this, but it's a trick that I learned. Because then you don't have clumps of beef when you do this. Uh huh. I was doing uh, bolognese sauce in the Bahamas many years ago. Beef and pork. Beef. Half and half. Half and half. Beef and pork. Did we have to completely cook it or no? no? Just sear it like this. You're gonna see right now. It's seared. I try to show to Benji. Okay. The meat is just seared. Yeah, it's not cooked. Not cooked, not yet. Okay. Low down. Aha! Alright. And it's like new. Or we're deglazing, we're removing the flavor in it. Deglazing? Deglazing. Wow, fancy work. Which means? The glass, the cuisson. From uh -huh. the meat. Which is but this we're not gonna try it, no? No, 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 that goes here. Goes here, all yeah. right. So now I'm gonna come in with a spatula. Show this to Benjamin, because I'm always amazed that Hugo never throw anything. I mean, I'm to gonna... the last drop, to the last small piece, he always get it, like a real. Well, that's, that's money right there. So the next step that we have this yes. again is now that it's warm again, a bit of oil. Okay. Yes, sir. Wait for it to get warm. So we have the oil is warm. You can see it's smoking. All right. So we have our onions in it. Okay. Uh huh. How long is it gonna take this to cook this? Again, we have to cook it completely or not? Yet? The whole thing takes an hour. It takes two hours to prep. By the way, it was an hour and a half of cooking. So in two hours, the meal is done. Okay? So mushrooms, onions are in, then the mushrooms. All right. Yeah. We're going to put some stock. Okay. Now some recipes call for a mushroom, bouillon, a vegetable stock, beef stock. You can make the whole thing if you're a vegetarian also. You would remove the meat and put more mushrooms in it. That would work. Okay? Big and moussaka. Okay. It smells very good, Benji. You feel the smell? Oh my god, it smells so good. How many portions of moussaka are we gonna do here, Hugo? That will give us about seven good portions. Seven good portions? Okay. Alright. Normally you have the same amount of potatoes that you have as of meat. Uh-huh. Okay. But I, I have a little bit of more meat and more potatoes than meat. Okay. I like potatoes, so I add a bit more. I like potatoes too. Okay. Okay, you say we're gonna put it into the oven. Then why we are what we're doing with the potatoes here now? We're gonna to start to cook them to get flavor all together. Aha. Uh -huh. So now to this we're gonna add back our meat. Ah, back the meat. Yeah. Alright. Like this. And now all the flavors start to mix. We start to mix all together. Okay? Aha. Uh -huh. Now to this also we have some paprika. 
smoked paprika. Okay. 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 How much is that? It's about a half, half a teaspoon. Spoon. Half a teaspoon. Okay. We have chubritsa. Chubritsa. Okay. And we have some cumin. All right. Cumin is like for pork. It goes good with pork, no? Yeah. All the pork meat goes really well with this. Okay. This is for after. We're gonna season this with a bit of salt. We're gonna put a little bit of water on this. On this. Uh, that's when you would put the bouillon. If you have the bouillon or the broth, you would put it in. Okay. Now is the moment. Yeah. Do you like moussaka, Benji? I love it. I'm really? getting. I'm getting very excited. It's gonna be my breakfast. It's gonna be your breakfast. What time is now? It's, it's breakfast time. All right, so we're gonna put some water in okay. it, and then some of some bouillon. We're gonna put some tomato puree that I have. Okay. okay. I have this over here, which is a tomato-based puree. I have there's some red pepper in it also, but oh, oh, oh that's nice. That's yeah, a nice color. Nice color. All right, so we have our potatoes with a little broth over here, like this. All right. Okay, so you mix. And already more liquid. Yeah. You want to have the liquid in it so it kinds of cooks the potato. Uh -huh. I, I think already our meat is, should be ready, no? The meat is done, everything is done. The meat is done. The the lower the heat. Done. Lower the heat a little bit. Yeah. When you, you already finish all the dinners, so chef dinners in the... Yes, we finished this. We have coming in in end of August, 26, 27, 27, 28 of August. We have a Italian Asian dinner on the Friday. What? And we're also going to have a pasta workshop on the following Saturday. Nice. And Italian Asian dinner. Fusion, yes. That is very fusion, man. That's going to be interesting. The last time I have to say to everybody that was Hugo's birthday. I wanted to go for dinner here, and Hugo didn't have free seats for me. Everything was sold out again. Everything was sold out. I called Hugo, please, I need free seats. No. The thing is, with the COVID, we have to limit the space upstairs, unfortunately. Uh huh. And we're kind of limited in the amount of people we can sit. To how many people? Maximum we can do is 40. Maximum you can. But it's amazing that you, you still can do it. You still have a, a super record of no problems, doing good. We are, we are now we're not wearing the mask for the video. But normally, when we cook, we have, the, we have the mask, we have gloves on. Just for the video, we took them off to be able to talk. Just a quick note. I'm putting, as you see here, I'm filling the molds, okay? But I'm also putting some liquid. That's important because you want the potatoes to cook. We made a lot. I'm going to finish some at home today for me. I'm going to cook this at home today for me. Um, but you want to make sure that you have some liquid in it. Otherwise, the potatoes will dry up and there won't be anything. And you fill it three quarters, let's say. Yeah, because you want to put on top a layer of yogurt with flour and baking soda in it. But we, we put it when it's almost ready or we put it from, yeah, the, from we the bake, beginning? We bake this in the oven first uh -huh. at 180 for about, that takes about this size, we'll take about 30 minutes and that will mold the bake. 30 minutes? Yeah. Because you want you want the top to caramelize a little bit. You want the top to become slightly crusty, what you want to have. And then once it's done, we'll mix meanwhile our yogurt with the flour and then uh, a bit of salt and a bit of baking soda, so it fluffs up a bit, and we'll pour it on top and we'll just bake it again in the oven. So once yeah. it's cooked, you have a nice thick layer on top. This is so, the smell is so nice, man. Remembers me, winter in Bulgaria. Oh, that's you know, yeah, we're in, we're, in we're in August, we're doing this. Not really the right season for it, but I really wanted to do this for a while. Okay. Now we go to the oven. Go to the oven. Works fine. You need a dry oven. Okay. And it needs to be at 185. Because you want the meat to caramelize on top slightly, okay? There's a fan on, I do this. I'm gonna put, to start with, I'm gonna put 34 minutes. 34 start. minutes? 34 minutes to start. And we're gonna check. I'm gonna check. Right. So my oven is already warm, you can feel the heat yes. coming out already, okay? So this goes in. So again, the other, you wanna caramelize the top. Why you don't put them in line? Three of them. Why did you put one more here? Because I, I want the air to circulate better. Ah, if I put it like whoa, this, whoa. this will be a dead spot in it. Don't keep this secret just for yourself. Tell to the people. It's a habit. It's a habit to keep the secrets. No problem. We take the secrets from no, Ugo. It's a habit to do it this way. I'm sorry. <laughs>
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And very this good. This goes. This goes in the oven for 34 minutes. 34 minutes. It might be less. Around 25. We'll check. I'll See wait. you in 25 minutes. See you in 25. Hugo, what is all that? We are doing the typical Bulgarian part of it. Most countries have a, a way how they put bechamel sauce or milk or something. But Bulgaria, because they have an amazing yogurt. Yes, sir. So I'm going to put yogurt on top of it, but not just yogurt only. So I have a cow yogurt. There's different kind of yogurt. There's sheep, cow, buffalo. There's goat. There's camel yogurt. Really, 4.5% fat yogurt. There's fatter still. There's 10%, 20% yogurt. In this, I also have. Hugo, why we don't when we come back teach the people to make Bulgarian yogurt? Is that possible? Yeah, we can do it in September. Yeah. We can do that in September. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be amazing if the people can learn how to prepare at home their traditional Bulgarian yogurt. It's gonna be uh, so, so back this, so we have yogurt, 4.5 percent. I have here baking soda. Baking soda for what? That's gonna give it a, a fluff. It's gonna expand the the, the, the mixer will react with the yogurt. It's gonna expand it, uh -huh. make it lighter and denser. But be careful with the baking soda to don't be soda taste. That's why there's a little bit. I've seen some people that you, you taste the soda after, yeah. especially when they do cookies. So we have the yogurt, we have the baking soda, we have some flour. Okay. Just regular flour, if you flour. And I'm going to put some egg yolks in it. Just the yolks? Just the yolks. I don't need the egg white in it. Okay. Now some people, they're going to break, they're going to separate the egg yolks. They're going to do it in their hand. And you're going to break the egg. I'll show you what not to do. Because if you do this, like that, Okay? And you would separate in your hand like this. Uh -huh. this. I never two, see that. Two before. things happens. You're gonna break the yolk. Yeah. Okay. And also because in your hands you have acidity, you have fat. Uh-huh. So this egg white, let's say I separate properly. So this was my egg white over here. When I want to whip it up, it's not gonna rise anymore because of the acid and the fat in my hands. Okay. So the egg whites will never go fluffy the way they should be. Alright. Good tip, Hugo. Do you have an extra egg? That's it, we only have one egg yolk. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem, man. And you mix it? You just mix it. Can I put cheese on that? Like a, like a white cereal, a, a let's say. I would tell you yes, but in the comments underneath, we're sure gonna get a million. My grandmother does do it this way or that or that. It's possible. But, but for you, it will be tasty to get some well, small like chunks. I like cheese. I like so. cheese too, you know, I think it so makes sense. I would probably do it. I probably would do it wrong. And if I do, I'm sorry if I offended you. That's not the idea. Not the idea. The idea is to promote Bulgarian cuisine around the world in an easy way. We upload this video in our YouTube channel. Bites in uh, History. Bites in History. And people from all around the world can see and learn about Bulgarian cuisine, Bulgarian food, Bulgarian traditions, exactly. Bulgarian history. All right, so time has passed, we're good to go now. Wait, wait, wait. Wow, can it's very hear? hot. Can yeah. you hear? I can hear. Can you hear, Benji? Yes. You see how the top has crusted? Yeah, That's what yes, you want yeah. to have. You want to have this. Are the potatoes already cooked? Yeah, yeah, they're I want to check. That's the important part. You want to make sure your potatoes are cooked? And you see that we had plenty of liquid before we started. Yes. You see that now, there's almost nothing left. Yes, yes, yes. That's what you want to have. But it's still moist. It's not still dry. moist. It's still moist. It's not dry. Okay. So you have a nice crust on top. I have my mixture of yogurt now with the yes, baking soda and then the egg yolk. How do you learn divide portions, Hugo? You know, it's, 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 it's not easy. I had great chefs that taught me this. It's like when you do this, for example, you see, I put two to start with, uh -huh. and then one, and then a half. So you got to be smart because you want to make you want to make sure that everything has the same quantity. Yeah, but this is a beginner's mistake, no? To don't yeah. to don't make it even or to one with more than the other. Well, that, that's practice, man. That's just that's the years of practice and, and getting there. So you come and you spread it out like this as much as possible. Uh huh. Okay, try and cover all the parts. As you open your oven, you wait a few seconds, hot air come out. Yes, sir. And then you can put it. 
And now, how long that will you put it again? Six to seven minutes, because I don't have much. It's gonna go really fast. Okay. okay. It's just to caramelize some stuff. You just want to caramelize and you want to make it golden brown. Is it? Looks fantastic, Hugo. Can you hear the noise? That's it. That's like the... Yes. Yes. You have a look on that. See, that's what you want to have. This is a bit palish, like me on the beach in the summer. It's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> but but this is okay. It's, it's good. Anyway. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's, perfect. it's, perfect. it's, it's ready to eat. You see, the top is it's not. This one, I will take this one. I will take this one here. I will give you guys this one. All right. And what we are trying? You can see that the, the top has cooked. It's it's not liquid anymore. It's not soft. Okay. I put my thumb in it and look the, the finger. It's dry. Has nothing. Yes. It has created a skin. And it took, let, let's, let's recall, it took 35 minutes, the first uh, part into the oven, yeah. and after? Depending on the size of the potatoes. If you make like bigger cubes, if you have yeah. a big container, it will take longer to cook. If you make individual and with smaller potatoes, this, all this in total, would take about an hour to make. One, one question that I have. Yeah. If I if I'm having this for for dinner, let's say, what should I go with some wine, some beer? Which goes good with this? Well, rakia would be nice to start. This goes really well with shopska, which we made a few episodes ago. Go on yes. by Sanisari to check the shopska episode. Yes. So you have the shopska with this with rakia. Um, I would go. Uh, I'm a beer person. I, I would go with beer. If mm -hmm. you're a wine person, I would suggest probably. Uh, Red wine, and then I might be wrong. It's up to yours, but um, I would do the red wine with this. And this is uh, a full plate. It, it doesn't go with a garnish or something. It as just, is, as it's is. just like yeah, that. It's like this. You can actually make this today, like this, without the yogurt, and then put it in the fridge. And the next day, you put it in the fridge with aluminum foil on top to warm it up, and then you do the the glazing with the yogurt on top. You do that? Yeah, you could do that. All right. It's actually better today for later than today right now because now it's good it's awesome we made it so it's super yeah. good but if you were to do this and then warm it up in three hours or four then it has more taste it's even better. so Daniel that's it that's the moussaka the Bulgarian moussaka but I cannot wait and I cannot say bye bye to the people before we to try it but this is see we have we have beef we have yogurt potato just plain that I will try it let's see look at this you can see the meat you can see all the toppings on top, and yes. now it's hot. It's still hot. Mmm, <laughs> a bit hot, but <laughs> awesome. So, guys, like, thank you very much for this, for being with us this season on Bites and History. Uh, we started as a four episodes. We'll see how it goes. End up being a thirteenth episode. This is number thirteen. I don't know. Yeah. Which number it is? I but I know. want to thank. To Hugo for doing this, allowing us to share with all of you this uh, Bulgarian traditional food. I hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoy doing we it. We had a fun time doing it. And I want to thank also my school, the Coney Art Institute, and Varna University for allowing us to be here uh, throughout these episodes. We'll be back next season. If you're a student, you want to you want to know how to cook, and you're not sure about it, come and visit us. We'll gladly have you. We have a new program starting. Let me tell you this quickly. Tell me that. A program called Foodology, where you're going to learn the culinary arts and the food science behind it. It's in Bulgarian. It's given in Dobrić, our new campus. All right. It is starting. We are the only one in Eastern Europe. The only one. Nobody else in Eastern Europe uh -huh. does this. There's us, and there's a guy in the U.S. doing this, and that's it. But can I make a question? Yeah. Foodology. Yeah. What I'm going to work after when I become a foodologist. You're gonna to work as a food scientist, research R and uh, R and D, which is all that. As a, you can work as a nutritionist, you can work as a, bio, a food biologist, you can work as a food chemist, you can work as a food design expert, you can work as a food just a blogger, you can work as a food critic, or as a cook also. Then it's a lot of uh, opportunities to the people that study. How, how long it takes? It's a three-year program. It's in Bulgarian, so it's good for all Bulgarians. Ours is in English over here, but that one is in Bulgarian, so good for Bulgarian students. 
Uh, it's brand new. It's in Dobrich, which is 77 kilometers from here. It's easy. It takes. They, they, they have dorms there. They have dorms. Also, if you're not from Varna and you want to go there, we have dorms in Dobrich. Check on the Vum web page and check for food. It's brand new. We're just starting it. We're building it as it goes. It's going to be an awesome program. You're going to teach there? I'll be, I'll be giving classes once in a while. We have great chefs there also. I'll be giving classes once in a while also. Amazing. Come and see us. I will. Have a great summer, guys. See you in September. Enjoy the summer. Go to the beach. Like and subscribe. Thank you very much.